Hi guys, good morning. This is Pastor G here with this week's edition of Coffee with Pastor G. And to this morning, we're going to be looking at Proverbs 14. Uh, the verse that I'd like to share with you here today is verse 12. <clears throat> Solomon writes here in Proverbs 14, 12. He says, there is a way which seems right to a man, but in its end is the way of death. Isn't it interesting that man's propensity to rely on his own thoughts, his own understanding of things, uh, that this will often lead a man or a woman's path in life of uh, the things that we feel. Uh, maybe you've heard people say before uh, that they will be letting their heart lead them and whatever they feel is the right thing to do. Uh, this, when we understand the very character and nature of our being and our hearts that are desperately and deceitfully wicked, the Bible says, uh, then we begin to understand that this propensity uh, to trust our own thoughts is deceptive and can be very deceiving and what you are doing in a sense when you are uh, trusting in your own ways or um, seeing a way that seems right to you what you're doing is you are putting your ways above God's ways and this is always going to be a problem especially for the believers very interesting that in Genesis chapter uh, 3 verses 1 through 7 the story of Adam and Eve and remember when the serpent came to Eve to deceive her the serpent kind of questioned what God had told Eve when he said hath God said uh, Eve full well knew what God had told her but you see the deception was that the enemy tried to get her uh, to think for herself uh, to rely uh, to give into this propensity to uh, trust in yourself and so from the very beginning, uh, Satan has used this tactic. Uh, and we see this so prevalent in colleges uh, in the United States these days, this higher learning and higher thinking and learning to trust your gut or your instincts. Uh, no Christian brothers and sisters, uh, we need to depend and rely on the word of God. We must choose to trust him over ourselves, even if that means what God's word is saying goes contrary to what I'm feeling, then we need to trust God's word and not our feeling. And so here I believe is the answer to this problem of trusting ourselves and the solution to uh, how we deal with it. It's found in Isaiah chapter 55. At verse 7, the prophet says this, says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord, and he will have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. And so what is the Bible saying here? That the wicked should forsake their way and their thoughts and return back to the Lord. So maybe you've made some decisions or choices that have led you into a predicament. Uh, the Bible would say for you to turn those thoughts back to God, uh, back to trusting God, seek what his word would tell you to do and stand firm upon that word. Remember, Jesus said uh, that it is the wise man or woman who builds their house on the rock, the solid foundation, Jesus Christ, the word of God, because when those storms come and they will come, they will beat against the house, but if it is built on the solid foundation of Jesus Christ, that house will stand. And so who are we trusting? Are we trusting ourselves in ourselves um, or are we putting our trust in the Lord? It's interesting because if you continue in Isaiah at verse eight of chapter 55, the prophet continues and he says, for my thoughts, this is God speaking, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Here's the reality, guys. Uh, why it's better to trust God than ourselves is because God knows more than we know. Because God's thoughts are above our thoughts, are beyond our thoughts. 
think about this, God is omniscient. God is omnipresent. God has foreknowledge. God knows your heart better than you know your own heart. And so why wouldn't we trust the one who knows all things instead of putting trust in ourselves who um, fall short at best, who don't have all the information, who are having to guess on things? Well, don't guess anymore. Put your trust in the word of God and you will never fail. And why this is so important, especially in times like these, well, 2 Corinthians 10 uh, reminds us, guys, about this war that we are in. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4, says, For the weapons of our warfare are not of flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. That is our weapon in this spiritual warfare. To not allow the devil to deceive us into thinking we know better than God. Uh, but this scripture says that our warfare is not against flesh and blood. It's against rulers and principalities. And these weapons are not carnal. They're spiritual in nature. And so it, it all begins in the mind. That's what he said. We are taking our thoughts captive and then we are washing them against the word of God. If you want to know if your thoughts are of God or not, then compare it to the word of God. And if it lines up with scripture, then I would say you have a green light on that. But if the word of God goes contrary to your thoughts and your desires and your heart's leading, then I would say you have a decision to make. Either trust yourself and watch what happens or put your trust in God and you will know what will happen. And so, brothers and sisters, may you be blessed today and stay cool out there. Um, services, we're still planning on having services. I know a lot of things are coming down the pipe from the governor and all of these things. Rest assured, we're still going to have church. Uh, we are still deciding, the board, if um, need be, if we can actually move service to be outside. Uh, but as of right now, we still intend on having church Thursday, Sunday, um, and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, but either way, we will be having church. We're going to continue to be online as well. Um, so keep us in prayer as we pray for you and cover you and bask you. And we love you and can't wait to see you. God bless.